And speaking of Willy Kluche, you remember he said in that report that a lot of the players are always looking to do better or play in the Africa Cup of Nations to further themselves abroad. One of the leagues that every African player that I can think of wants to play in is the Premier League. And from the first time its iteration, the Football League had a black player in the 1880s when Arthur Wharton first became the black player, the first black player to do so, to the new age of JJ Okocha, Michael Essien, DJ Drogba Samoleto, and others, Africans have been an integral part of the success story of the English Premier League. A new book has been written, it's called Made in Africa, and it chronicles the story of Africa's EPL stars. There it is. We are going to speak to the author to give us an idea of why he wrote this book and what it means for the future of African football in the English Premier League. Ed Arons, thank you for the time. Good evening, how are you? Doing well, thank you. By day, you write for The Guardian, and it looks like by night, you've been researching and writing this wonderful book. Tell us what it's about, apart from what I've given. And obviously there's lots of, plenty of Ghanaians in the story, as you mentioned, Michael Essien, and also Tony Yaboa, uh, Nee Lamptey. Uh, but yeah, starting, there's a lot, you know, a whole chapter on Arthur Wharton to start it off, uh, who, who was born in Accra and then moved to England uh, initially to, to study to be um, a priest, actually, but then uh, became a goalkeeper. And he was also uh, the first, uh, first man to hold the 100 metres world record. So he's a predecessor to, to Usain Bolt and all the others. So he was quite, a, quite an individual. And uh, yeah, he's, he's you know, a big part of the book. About African football's history in the Premier League while researching, did it come as a surprise to you that the Premier League is spending more and more on African players, or to say that they are trusting African talent more and more? Yeah, I mean, it's clear, it's clear that it's, uh, you know, become, I think at the, at, the end of the, at the end of the book, I've got a list of all the, all the players from Africa who played in the, in the Premier League by country. And if you look, you know, since the year 2000, it's really accelerated. And I think the total number is about 300, if you add them all up. And, it's, and that's, you know, well over 10% of the, the whole number of players that have played in the Premier League. So it's really a significant number if you, if you think about uh, that you know over, over the last 20 years especially it's uh, it's grown a lot um, in fact in 1992 in the first year of the Premier League there was no African players at all there was no one from outside uh, uh, outside Europe so you know things have changed a lot very quickly you know when I started my career in journalism the image of the African player came with a stereotype and I'm sure you will remember this you had to be tall, you had to be big, you had to be fast. And that was the typical cliched stereotype that was perpetrated. But now we have a mix of, you know, uh, short players, tall players, diminutive, skillful. How has the stereotype changed over the years according to your research? Yeah, I think that's very true, actually. And, you know, especially in the early years when um, players like Steve McConey and Albert Johansson played, who were both South African, and they were both, like, tricky wingers, you know, who uh, had skills that people had never seen before. And I think that was the initial attraction of African players. But then, you know, in the modern era, players like, uh, you know, uh, obviously JJ Okocha are very skillful as well. But then there's different types of players, all, all sorts of players from Africa, like Essien, who was a powerful midfielder, or Drogba, who was a big striker, or Lucas Redebe, who was a, a powerful, brilliant leader and a defender. You know, they've African players have proven that they can play in all positions and, uh, you know, have, have done so well over the, especially again, you know, in the last few years, it's really, they've really come to the fore yeah, with, yeah. Uh, you know, Liverpool, Sadio Mane and uh, Mohamed Salah and lots of other players as well, you know, Drogba, Essien and, uh, and Yaya Toure in the last few years. Yeah. So um, your book can be got on Amazon, I guess. Yeah, it's on Amazon and uh, in WH Smith in the UK. And yeah, I think uh, hopefully it's going to be available in Ghana in, in, a, in like a couple of weeks. We're just trying to sort out uh, yeah, yeah. how it's going to be for the rest of the world. But, I mean, currently, uh, Ghana has yeah, got a I good... really enjoys reading it. Ghana has got a good representation in the Premier League. So, of course, we'd like to see. Thank you, Ed Arons, for writing this book for the continent. Thank you very much. A All pleasure. right. So, Africans in the Premier League, we always have a good story. Now it's in a book. You can get it from wherever you get your books as well. I'm Gary Al Smith, and 
It's a big weekend for Joy Sports. Tomorrow on um, Joy 99.7 FM at 1210, we have an interview with Stephen Appiah, who will be telling us about what he's got to do in the future. And then on Sunday at 7.30, MFR Pell will have a sporting interview on Beyond the Lockdown, Keru Kraku, Desperio Kujeto, and Malko Afajinu. It's a big sporting weekend on Joy Sports. Stay with us. For Mom, Gary Al Smith, thank you for your time.